Hey, what's cracking everybody? On today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Project Bluefin, the next generation Linux workstation designed for reliability, performance, and sustainability. And we are here on the uh, Bluefin uh, website. And there is some uh, relative info here. So uh, let's get it up in a virtual machine and take a look at it. I'll have this link down in the video description. That way you can uh, go through it all if you want to and uh, check it out yourself. But uh, it is a blue fan. And there is a button right here that says try out. If you click on try out, it's going to ask you what type of system you have sort of set up your download. All right, and I think this is based on Fedora. It's either Debian or Fedora, one or the other. But let's say, for example, I'm using AMD, and it says, are you a developer? I'll say no, and then it gives you a link right here so you can download the ISO. So pretty much that's how the uh, the website worked for uh, setting up your download. All right, but let's head on over to a uh, virtual machine, and let's take a look at uh, Project Bluefin. We are here on the uh, virtual machine and it has opened up the uh, Anaconda installer. And like I said before, I think it's a Fedora based, uh, you know, Red Hat based uh, distribution, or it could be Debian based, either or. But right now, uh, English, English United States selected. I'll click on continue. All right. So right now I have to satisfy this option right here that has the uh, warning triangle. And basically, it's just about uh, setting up the uh, hard drive. And right now, it's set up on automatic. And I'm not going to encrypt or anything like that. I'm just going to click on done. And that should be good. So from here, it's all about beginning the installation. All right, so the installation is now uh, underway. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, pause the video. And when we come back, we'll uh, boot into uh, Bluefin, Project Bluefin. From the installer, I'm going to say it's a Fedora based system, but I could be wrong. We'll find out once we uh, reboot into the system. It appears that the installation is now completed, so we'll go ahead and click on the reboot system. Keep in mind that I have not entered any user info yet, so. Uh, we still have to go through that process. And I have confirmed this is based on Fedora Silver Blue. We are now rebooted into the uh, Bluefin system. And we have a button here that says uh, Start Setup. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Uh, location Services, it's right now it's turned off. Select Next. Enable third party repositories. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to do, but uh, I'll just set it up. And now we get to enter our user info. All now I'll give it a strong and complicated password. That's not a one, two. And we're all done. Now we can start using Bluefish. Oh, not Bluefish, Bluefin. <laughs> and one of the first things we are greeted with is a tour. And it says, welcome to Bluefin 41 from Fedora Silver Blue. If you want to learn your way around, check out the tour. So we'll go ahead and take the tour. Okay, let me just make this full screen so it's not all to one side. It says, let's begin. Learn about the key features in Bluefin 41.2024.1229.0 Silver Blue. And from right here, you get an overview. A uh, powerful search to search, you just start typing in, in the overview. You can use search to launch apps and files, perform calculations, and more. Stay organized with workspaces. For those that have uh, touch pads, you can uh, swipe up and down, or you can swipe left and right. And that's it. So we can go ahead and close this. And this is the uh, silver. The Bluefin 41, based on Fedora Silver, or Silver Blue, or something like that. But uh, right now, the uh, the resolution is not quite up to scale, so let's go ahead and let's fix that. So let's look for a terminal. 
or better yet, since this is a, since this is a, looks like the GNOME desktop environment, I think we can go to settings. And from right here, we just have to find displays. And we'll set that up to a 1920 by 1080. And keep the changes. All right. So now we have a proper uh, screen resolution. And everything looks a whole lot better. The wallpaper looks better. Everything looks better. All right. So this is the uh, GNOME desktop environment. With the GNOME desktop environment, we do have the uh, panel on top. And on the panel, we have a system tray that is to the far right. And it is all one single button. It looks like three separate icons, but it is all one single button. And if you open it, it gives you all the different options inside of the little app that it opens up. So you got your power sessions, lock screen, your settings. You could change your uh, dark style, you know, all kind of different settings here. And on the middle of the panel, we have our uh, system date and time. And open this up would open up your uh, notifications and your calendar. And to the far upper left, we have a button that says U. So clicking on it opens up a small little uh, menu here. And then you have your activities. Then on the bottom, we have a dock. And the dock is, you know, pretty much basic on GNOME systems. From here, you have your application launcher right here, which says show apps. And I'm not seeing any apps right now. Kind of confused by that. Oh, there you go. All right, so we have a little glitch. At first, it just shows you the workspaces, but if you click on it a second time, then it shows you the actual apps. And from right here, you can see pretty much this is everything that's installed on your system. And on the dock panel itself, what we have is a, we have a trash, help, software, files, Thunderbird, and Firefox. So let's go through each one of these one by one. So the trash is, you know, gonna be like your pre-delete section. So if you delete something, it's gonna to go to here before you finally delete it from your system. And this is, of course, basically opening up in your file system. Your... And then we also have help. So help has come standard pretty much with all known desktop environments. So if you wanna learn about your system, click on help and look for the section you're looking for. There's even a search here. And next to that, we have software. Software is going to be our uh, GNOME software. And uh, let's see if we are fully up to date. Click on the little hamburger menu here. And we can click on about software. And it is software, the GNOME project 47.1. And yeah, right here, we have two tabs. We have explore and we have installed. Install is going to show you everything that's installed. And then you have uh, explore. So let's look at, uh, see if we have our uh, updates. Typically you would find your updates here, but I'm not seeing anything about that. Let me do another, uh, let's go to preferences. And software updates are set to manual. So let's see what happens if we set it to automatic. Well, it doesn't let us set to automatic, so all right. All right, so this is your software manager. If you want to look for something specific, you can go to this little magnifying glass here. So let's say uh, VLC. There it is. We can click on it. And then it's going to install from FlatHub. Let's see if it has other sources. Seems like all the sources are going to be from FlatHub. So we can just click on install and it'll start installing the system itself. It hasn't asked for a password yet, and I don't know if it actually will. But uh, it's doing the installation now. And this is software. While this is installing, let's go ahead and open up our files. Files is going to be our file manager. It's pretty standard on the GNOME system. Pretty much any, any Linux system is going to come with a file manager. Uh, you know, they all vary, but they're all pretty much the same. Right now, you have your uh, standard uh, desktop layout. You got your desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. 
And if you wanted to see the hidden files, Control H on your keyboard will show you the hidden files. And to hide them again, Control H will hide them. All right, VLC has finished uh, installing, so we'll get back to that in a sec. All right, next to that, we have Thunderbird. Thunderbird is going to be your email client. So, you know, if you don't want to use your web browser to read your emails, you can always use this from right here. You set up your account and continue forward with it. And of course, next to that, we have Firefox, which is our uh, web browser. And uh, Firefox on Fedora, I think they use the uh, same one as Debian. But let's go ahead and confirm that right now. Go to the hamburger menu, go to help, and about Firefox. And oh, it's, it's using the, uh, flat, the flat pack version on this one. So it is, it's not using the same one that uh, usually you see on Debian devices. This is actually coming from Flatpak. So more than likely, it's going to be an updated version. All right. So these are all the planned applications that we have on our system. So we did install VLC, and there it is right there. So just clicking on it, we'll open up VLC, which is a, you know, audio video player. You can do a lot with VLC. But uh, that install, no problem. And as far as everything else that's on here, you know, you got a calculator, calendar, you got your documentation, you got your settings, terminal. And here's the thing for system update. So it seems like system update is set up on a, a separate uh, application itself. So let's go ahead and open that up now, see what it looks like. And what it does is basically it opens up a terminal. So from here, you give it your uh, your password and then it'll just start updating. And while that's updating, let's look at the uh, applications again. And yeah, you got maps and, you know, it comes pretty uh, basic. So, you know, it just comes with a default GNOME setup. So if you wanted to get a full system, you know, you would have to download, you know, the applications to make it a full system. Like, you know, you want to get your GIMP and your office and, you know, things like that. So. Right out the box, it comes pretty basic, but you know, that can be fixed either through the terminal or opening up uh, software and you could get pretty much it. You get a full system going, starting off just with the defaults here. But anyways, this was the, this is the first look at a uh, Bluefin. It is a uh, Fedora based system. Want to take a look at it and you know, comes with a known desktop. It is a little bit tweaked, but uh, not that much. And, uh, it is pretty basic, so uh, you can pretty much build it yourself. And uh, from what I'm seeing, you know, everything opens up okay. Everything works fine. I don't feel any lag or anything like that. So it definitely, uh, it feels smooth. So it is working without a doubt. And if this is something you want to take a look at, uh, I will have the uh, link to the web page down in the video description. That way you can play with it. And I would always uh, suggest that you play with it in a virtual machine before you go bare metal with it. Because if you go bare metal with it without knowing what you're getting into, you're just asking for problems. But uh, yeah, so right here it is fetching the, all of the system updates and it's doing that. But uh, we've pretty much seen everything we need to see on here. There's nothing that really stands out. Like I said before, it is pretty basic. You know, it comes with your standard apps that come with GNOME. And other than that, you would fill it yourself. It does have a video player here that I don't think I've seen before, which is called Clapper. Um, not sure if that's uh, something common on Linux. For, for me, it's my first time seeing it. So that's why I'm saying that uh, it's something that I, I don't think is common. But maybe it is. Maybe I just haven't seen it yet. But I did click on it and nothing happened. So let me click on it again. Maybe because the system is updating, maybe that's why it's not uh, opening. So I'll I'll pause the video now. Oh, there you go. I was gonna pause the video and wait for all these uh, updates to complete before trying to open this up again, but uh, it did open up. So you can add files, you can add a URL, you know. It's a basic uh, media player, so nothing fancy. Pretty straightforward. All right, well, the system is upgrading right now, but like I said before, we've pretty much seen everything we need to see on this system. 
it's pretty basic and uh yeah like i said it's pretty smooth everything's working out of the box so yeah no problem all right uh if you're new to the channel please go ahead and uh subscribe uh if you like this video here that you just saw please give it a like if you didn't like it then uh, give it a thumbs down it's all fair on uh, linux hub prime all right you guys that's gonna do it for this video and i'm out